Hello students, welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, we will be studying about protocols. So starting with the definition of protocol, as I discussed in the introductory video also, a protocol is a set of rules and these are standard rules that are agreed by the communicating parties, the sender and the receiver along with the intermediate parties also that are involved in the communication. So it might happen that uh, the two the two communicating parties that is the sender and the receiver are lying in two different networks which are separated by different geographical conditions okay and uh, there might be different intermediate nodes or routers or devices that are helping in the communication now all these elements or all these parties must agree to some rules how the data will be transmitted in what form at what speed and at what time how uh, the link will be established for communication and many other things and that is why we need protocols or some standard rules that everyone knows and everyone follows so uh, the example that i gave earlier also that if you want to talk to your friend and you start talking in uh, say French and your uh, friend just understands Spanish then your communication will be useless he, uh, what you are sending is not being understood or received as you want uh, by your friend so you need to agree upon a common language say English before communicating okay now let's uh, study some formal rules or uh, the, you know the points that why do we need these rules why do we need protocols what is the use of protocols let's write down these points one by one so you can note these points and uh, write down complete sentences in your exam uh, you just need to remember the important points you can take screenshot of these videos or just uh, take down notes by pausing the video also so the first important point that why do we need protocol is for flow control so what do we mean by flow control so imagine that you are uh, sending data at a particular speed and the receiver is not having the me any mechanism to receive the data at that speed so if your data is going faster than the receiver can receive some data is uh, might get lost at the receiver's end because his he'll not be able to receive and process everything that is coming so fast in his way so that is why flow control manages how at what speed the data flows between the sender and the receiver so it uh, the protocols help us manage when there is uh, the difference between the speed of data transfer when there is a difference in speeds of the networks in which the two communicating parties are present okay the next uh, usage of protocols is access control so access control means the path through which the logical connection or the sequence of links that are established either through circuit switching or through packet switching those links should be free when the data is being sent if more than one party is sending the data on the same link then their data will collide and get garbled okay so both the data that are being sent on the same channel will become garbage and no uh, receiver none of the two receivers will be able to make up what the original message was so access control that is provided by protocols that is ensured by protocols allows that uh, data gets transferred at the correct time when the intermediate links are present and it avoids the collision of data okay so uh, you need to just understand in very short what is access control the details of access control will be taught to you when you are in uh, undergraduate or postgraduate doing your specialization in computer science okay now the third important role of protocols is to decide the format in which the communication is happening the two communicating parties might have different formats for exchanging data similarly uh, the protocols also help us to decide whether a node has to forward the data somewhere or whether it is the uh, the node is the receiver itself so uh, uh, there happens that you are uh, uh, many a times you are a part of the network and you are receiving certain messages 
when you are acting as a node so i explained you earlier also a node is a device that is capable of routing or routing a particular data to different links it is able to forward the data on different channels but now uh, whether the node has to forward it whether the node has to uh, just accept the data and send it over its own network or send it out in the world all this information all this uh, control is done is managed by the protocol that is handling the communication okay so the sender and the receiver and the intermediate parties do not need to take care of anything the protocols tell you there are specific rules of how to do the communication if particular things are happening then the rules say that this is the situation and then do this so it is very clearly specified in the protocols that is why the entire internet is running so smoothly the next function or the need for protocols is to prevent any kind of data losses during transmission so there might happen at times that the channel through which the data is traveling uh, gets blocked or get, becomes unusable and data might get lost we have studied that data is broken down the message that the sender is sending is broken down in the form of packets and each packet may be routed through a different channel in case of packet switching mostly so uh, the data has a tendency to get lost also but protocols take care that even if some kind of data loss is happening then it tells the sender to resend a particular packet so that the receiver finally receives all the packet and uh, gets the original message also when uh, packet switching is taking place you can refer to the details of packet switching in my previous video that i have linked on the right hand side also and in the description box so when packet switching is happening different packets take different routes or different routes and uh, they travel different paths to reach the destination and at the destination they can uh, they can be received in different order so the protocols tell the receiver how to reorder the packet so that they can get back the original message everything all these things make protocols very useful and there are different kinds of protocols for different purposes so the first protocol that we will be studying is the http or the hypertext transfer protocol now uh, uh, before understanding hypertext transfer protocol or http you must understand what is hypertext so the entire internet and mainly the content of the internet that is the world wide web is mostly present in the form of hypertext documents so hypertext is any kind of document that has some links within itself so that when you click on that link you can reach another document so everything that you can uh, uh, access using a google search is linked to other things okay so generally a web page has multiple links that takes you to some other page a web page that does not have any outgoing links is is just solo you know it is not connected to any other thing so it can be reached only when you there is a direct url for it but hypertext is the kind of text is a document is uh, the content that contains links clickable links to other documents or the hyperlinks to other documents so that the entire information on the world wide web remains connected it can be reached from one point to another okay that is why you put on different hyperlinks in your uh, websites in your web pages okay now hypertext transfer protocol <coughs> sorry hypertext transfer protocol was developed by tim berners lee this is an important name that you should remember and uh, uh, tim berners lee developed this protocol along with ietf so this is an institution basically uh, it is internet engineering task force and the other organization is w3c which is world wide web consortium so these are the two organization along with whom tim berners lee developed http at this cern institute in 1989 okay 
Now HTTP is a client server protocol or you say it is a request response protocol. Now what do we mean by a request response or client server protocol is that there is one client who is asking for some resource who is requesting a resource that can be any image that can be any document that can be any resource that is present on the world wide web okay and there is another uh, system the server which we call who has that information who has that resource and that server is responding or sending back the response for the client's request so http works in the manner of request response so whenever you use your web browser a request in the form of a, web, a url is sent by your web browser using http to a server okay so when you type www.youtube.com the server of youtube server means server is any system who has the information of uh, of the web page that you are requesting so server is nothing special but it is any system that is providing you the information you can understand that as of now so if my system is providing some kind of information it has a resource that i can send out to some uh, my some of my teammates then my system acts as a server okay so uh, the uh, whenever you you make a request on your web browser say google chrome you type in a url say www.youtube.com then the http protocol finds out where this web page the where this uh, link www.youtube.com the web page related to this link is present it finds the appropriate server it gets back that web page and displays on your web browser so this entire thing is being taken care by http so http allows web browser to access this hypertext from web server so the content that http deals with is the hypertext that means documents containing links to other documents or linked content okay so your uh, web browsers can crawl through can search and give uh, results as a search whenever you search something in your web browser you get some results these are those links that can be reached via your web browser the uh, the web pages that are behind login credentials which are not linked to anything else are generally not accessible by web browsers okay so let's not go into that detail that is a different topic for study uh, let's come back to http now http also defines the way in which the response that is get that it is getting will be displayed uh, the format of that uh, uh, a uh, hypertext that is being exchanged and that is being transmitted so uh, the communication that is happening between two devices the client and the server is being governed by http it is actually creating a connection uh, a, a con communication pathway between the user's machine the client's machine and the web server on which the resource is located okay so this was all about http so http is basically working with uh, the displaying of content the searching of content and uh, giving you the results of any request that you made that you make on the internet that you use your web browsers for okay so it is http that is doing all the work for, from getting that content from that particular server and then displaying it to you sending the request getting the content and displaying it to you okay now let's come to the second protocol which is the ftp or the file transfer protocol as the name is clear file transfer protocol is helping you in the transfer of files from one system to another and it is also a client server protocol so there is a client client is any user who is using the his or her device to request some resource in this case a file is being requested so what happens is that uh, when we use the ftp we are basically 
uh, asking the server for certain kind of information present in some files so ftp logins are uh, very uh, you know very famous in the sense that uh, whenever you are asking for a resource generally the uh, the other party asks you for your authorization whether you are allowed to access that file or not whether you are allowed to download and access the the resource that you are requesting or not so this is also taken care by ftp it uh, connects you to the server from which you want to access the file it allows you to log in to that server when asked for authorization and authentication and then it gives you the file if you are authorized okay so whenever a file is requested by a user the ftp creates a logical connection okay as uh, just like http was creating a logical connection uh, whenever a web page was being requested here ftp whenever a file is being requested by a user a logical connection between the client and the server is made by ftp now if the server asks for a, a, a authentication or asks for a username or password then uh, you need to enter that otherwise some uh, file transfers are also possible without authentication so it is completely up to the server in uh, whether it is asking for the authentication or not but even if in either case ftp is taking care of the entire communication okay and it also handles many other things like the difference in file naming convention the difference in fi file formats that are supported at both the ends the file format that is supported at the server may not be valid at the uh, client's end so that is taken care by ftp it also handles the difference in directory structure so if you have uh, specified this particular directory structure which is not holding valid at the other end uh, that can, that part can also be handled by ftp so every protocol has a particular function for http it was displaying or accessing retrieving and uh, giving you the resources that you have requested for on a web page or on a, on the internet in came in case of ftp files are the resources that you are being provided and this is done using ftp okay now comes point to point protocol or ppp now point to point protocol has a very um you know a very uh, direct usage it it is used generally between routers or between modem to isp communication where you need a direct and dedicated connection between devices no interruption and direct connection is required because uh, for the communication that needs to take place so uh, uh, the point to point protocol also defines the rules that are required for authenticating the devices and for exchanging the data and it requires a duplex connection so every protocol has its requirements and has its services that it offers in case of point to point protocol it requires a duplex connection this is an important point and it also ensures that all the packets arrive in order at the receiver's end no matter how they are sent then point to point protocol also uh, informs the user the sender about lost or damaged packets and it requests the sender to transmit them again if any of the packets are lost in communication and as the examples as i told you the point to point protocol is mainly useful for router to router or router to router however you call it communication and the communication that happens between modem and isp so that ha communication has to be a direct dedicated link that is why ppp is used next is the smtp or the simple mail transfer protocol as the name suggests it is used for email transfer now what happens is that uh, whenever you send an email to someone your email has a header part and it has a content part so the smtp will not look at the content part so your data is safe but it will utilize this header part to find out from whom this particular email is coming and to whom this 
uh, email has to be delivered so what it does the smtp maintains a queue a queue in which it puts together all the emails and for each email it puts to which recipient it has to be delivered say r1 r2 and r3 now different emails are present in this queue as you know in queues the emails are uh, the content is added at the back and removed from the front okay so uh, if if this is an email which the smtp is processing right now it will look into what are all the recipients of this email then once this email is sent to a particular recipient this particular recipient will be removed from the list and when all the recipients have received the mail that means when the email has been delivered to all the recipient this particular email will be taken out of the queue it will be dequeued from the front okay now uh, what happens the smtp will take care of other emails so you need to remember that uh, there is for an email there is a header part and there is some content the header part basically contains the email addresses of the recipient okay so the email addresses tell smtp smtp where to send this particular email okay and once it knows what are the recipients it starts sending those emails it maintains a queue and in that queue emails are stored till all the recipients receive that email and once the recipient receive the uh, email is removed from that particular list okay now eventually or uh, the list of emails will become empty when all the uh, emails are done and now uh, there is an smtp uh, receiver program in which is in combination with the smtp sender program so whenever the email is sent from one side the smtp sender a module or the sender program will do all this tasks of sending the messages to the recipients and maintaining a queue now at the receiver's end there will be an smtp receiver program that is accepting the incoming mails and then delivering it to the receiver's mailbox okay so uh, you can think of it as two people working in pairs at each end one is sending out the mails which is the smtp sender program and the other is receiving and delivering it to the appropriate mailbox of the user okay coming to the last and the most important protocol that you need to know for data communication is tcp ip or the transmission control protocol and internet protocol so again these protocols work on a client server model and they are the backbone of network communication the entire communication the internet world wide web is working because most of the tasks most of the important uh, tasks are performed by tcp or ip and uh, underneath uh, other protocols these are the protocols that are actually delivering the content so http uh, will cannot work on its own it will need tcp ip for uh, communication for completing the entire channel so the details of uh, how level wise how layer wise these protocols work will uh, is out of the scope of uh, uh, class 12th but if you are interested and you want to know you can refer to the osi tcp model uh, that 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 governs how the data communication actually happens at different layers okay coming back to the tcp ip protocol so ip basically is a, it is a short form for internet protocol and ip protocol uh, ensures that every device on the internet is uh, associated with an internet address which is also known as ip address and ip protocol mainly helps in the actual routing of the messages so it will decide how uh, the message will go through the entire uh, channel different sequence of links and how it will be delivered whereas tcp takes care that uh, 
how the data will be broken down into smaller parts which are known as IP packets and how the data will be reassembled at the receiver's end. Okay, so we know that uh, uh, the entire message or data is broken down into IP packets and IP packets are then sent independently through the network, through the internet. So TCP take cares how to divide the data, how to reassemble the data at the destination and it also makes sure that all the packets are delivered and they are delivered uh, correctly they without any damage without any losses okay so these are the most important tasks performed by tcp and ip ip uh, uh, allocates or it, it governs that every device has an ip address so that ip address is basically the uh, address of a device on the internet so if anyone has to come to your house he or she must know your address that is uh, similarly if anyone has to uh, uh, send you some information or receive some information from you they must know your ip address okay so uh, ip protocol also helps in uh, routing of packets they help uh, how the packets actually what route is followed by the uh, packets and how intermediate routers will help in the communication whereas TCP takes care of packet reassembly safe and ensures the delivery of packet and the breaking down the fragmentation of packets okay so that is all for today's lecture I hope you have understood these protocols if this video helped you even a little please like this video and let us know in the comment section how do you find our content. Thank you for watching. Till we meet in the next video. Mind your exam.